House Wolford prevails against General Avlora's army and drives them out of Glenbrook. Though victorious, Roland sobs quietly, saddened by the sacrifices made in his name. Glenbrook is powerless, but knows they must keep the royal bloodline alive. Thus, the conspiracies and power struggles around the noble blood in Roland's veins continue to stain the land crimson. Once we have stacked those sandbags, we should be well fortified against even the fiercest deluge. Leave it to me. This old wolf has some vim in him yet. Phew. Haven't used some of those muscles since before I can remember. I must say, when I saw the enormity of the task before us, I did not think we would finish in mere bells. I had braced myself for a full day of labor, at the very least. Thank Benedict for that. We'd still be searching for weaknesses in our perimeter had he not been guiding us. Indeed, but let us not understate Eridor's feats of strength. Come now, Eridor. How many times must I tell you to be delicate with the sandbags? We only have so many at hand. I hear you, I hear you. I'll treat him as delicately as my lady love, in the absence of one. Now is not the time for jests, Eridor. If you don't want me complaining and you don't want me jesting, then I guess I'll just shut my mouth. To hear them trading barbs like children, you would never think they work so well together. Wisdom and strength. Two pillars that keep House Wolfort standing strong. Wisdom, eh? He wasn't always that way. Took him plenty of failing to get where he is now. I find that difficult to believe. Is there something you wish to share with us, Eridor? Might be. Maybe you've forgotten the folly of 20 years past, but my mind is a steel trap. And what's our task for today? We are to deliver this message to Lady Destra with all haste. Seems simple enough. Send a bird. I would not trust a bird in this rain. A horse would be more reliable and swifter besides. Is that so? I respectfully disagree, my friend. Either way, I'm not going to be the one nursing you back to health if you catch the chills. Shall we make it a wager, then? Send a bird, and we shall see who reaches Lady Destra first. You had best hurry. What? Benedict! Off he goes. Well then, where are those damned hawks? As I recall, Benedict arrived at around the same time as the Hawk. If it were a sunny day, he might have won. Ah, the folly of youth. Many of our best days were spent in Lord Simon's service. We made many such wagers, in an attempt to get into Lord Simon and Lady Destra's good graces. <laughs> I remember when... I believe we have had enough reminiscing for one day, Eridor. Don't be such a harsh taskmaster, Benedict. Where's the harm in a story? Ask me that again when the floodwaters break through our meager fortifications. There is much to do and little time to do it. Wouldn't you agree, Anna? M me? I, uh... 
Old friends or old enemies? Whatever the case, our work's done for the day. And there's nothing like a hard drink after hard labor. You two care to join me? I would love to. Please, regale me with more tales of your youth. I see no harm in one drink. <laughs> Let's be off, then. Shall we invite Benedict along? You'd only be wasting your breath. Now that you mention it, I do not believe I have ever seen you two sharing drinks. Spirits cloud the mind, so I rarely drink. When I do partake, however, I prefer to do so in quiet. I fear Eridor would only spoil that. Lord Saranoa never ceases to amaze me. Despite all the hours he dedicates to his duties, he looks none the worse for wear. Even so, I am certain it takes its toll on him. He wants to set an example for his people and those who serve him, and wishes not to worry them over his condition. Excuse me, Saranoa. But is there anything I could do to help? Ah, Frederica, my apologies for the delay. The citizen's petition will require a bit more time, so why don't you and Gila return home ahead of me? I see, if you insist. But please do not push yourself too hard, Saranoa. I shan't. Thank you, Frederica. Of course. <sighs> Is something the matter? It's rare of you to sigh like that. Did I? Oh my. It looks like something's troubling you. If you wish to talk about it, I am happy to lend an ear. Well, to be perfectly honest, I sometimes wonder if I can go on like this. Are things not going well with Lord Zaranoa? No! Zaranoa is as kind and gentle as ever. It is my own self I have doubts about. I cannot help but wonder if I am truly of any use to him. Since Lord Saranoa is always working so hard, why not give him a tonic to boost his vitality? I purchased one from a merchant not long ago. It should chase all his fatigue away. A good idea, to be sure, but the fact remains it is not me myself that is serving him. Then how about preparing a meal for him? Something nutritious to fill him with vim and vigor. Me? Cook? Yes. I am certain he would be delighted by anything that you make. But I've never cooked before. I doubt anything I make would suffice. You won't know until you try. Besides, what matters isn't the result, but the feeling behind it.
Use this cookbook. I'm sure you will find a recipe or two to your liking. Thank you, Gila. Now then, which of these would Saranoa enjoy? Looking worse for wear, Anna. Long scouting missions sure ain't easy. Easy or not, I do what duty demands. Do you need something? No. Just reckon Benedict must be relieved you're back safe and sound. Must he? Of course. After all, he treats you like his own daughter. Don't know any parent what wouldn't worry over their child. And he's got extra cause to fret. With all the dangerous work he gives you. Oh? It never crossed my mind. Benedict trusts me. That's all I've ever needed. That's so. Do all parents by blood show concern for their children? Wondering about yours, are you? That's none of your concern. I still remember how you insisted on being a scout. Soon as you were old enough. You wouldn't say why, but any fool could guess it was to find out more regarding your parents. This works well suited to that sort of thing. Yet Benedict refused me. And he was wise to do so. It ain't a job for an amateur. Guess he hadn't anticipated you'd trained under Archibald. I earned his respect when he saw what I could do. The means don't matter. Only the results. I have grave news, sir. The enemy has captured one of our scouts. I know our soldiers aren't broken easily, but given enough time in the enemy's hands, and here we are, severely shorthanded. I shall call a war council, so our approach may be reconsidered. Hmm. The scout has been rescued and returned safely home. Already? That was far sooner than I anticipated. I hope my actions were not out of line. No, no. Well done, Anna. I don't know where I'd be without you. Nor are you. Can't thank you enough for leaping to my scout's rescue. While Benedict was still pondering what to do. I'd pay good coin just to see that look on his face again. Hmm. So, think you'll find your parents? Not trying to dissuade you from looking, mind. I'm only being nosy. Dissuade? Is there something you've not told me? What would I know that you don't? Just take care you don't end up regretting it. I'm this close. I can feel it. Seems as if the troubles never cease. I'd kill for a drop of ale. I take it you and Benedict have seen your share of trouble. You have both served House Wolfort for many years, yes? Aye. We both served Lord Simon since we were green between the ears. Through the good times and the bad. 
To see him now, you wouldn't believe the stories of what we got up to in our tender years. Even then, though, he was always the schemer. Always drawn me into his fanciful plots. Has so much changed since then? <laughs> I don't reckon so. In any case, was there something you wanted to ask me? There was. The other day, Benedict posed quite the strange question to me. Where snowbell blossoms bloom? Indeed. I thought perhaps you had seen trace of the flowers while scouting with Flugi. I've spotted clusters of them in the deep mountain passes before, but not of late. So it is as I thought. They have ever been a rare sight, even more so in recent years. I had thought to procure one, but it may be wise to temper my expectations in that regard. Life always finds a way to flourish. I am certain Anna and I can find one before long. I would not have you chasing my idle fancies. You both have more vital duties to attend to. I... of course. So, Benedict's looking for a snowbell blossom. What's so peculiar about that? Nothing, if it were anyone else asking. However, I think you'd agree that Benedict is not the type to go picking flowers on a whim. They say that when a snowbell blooms... That moment is frozen in time. Precisely. You and Benedict both never fail to surprise, but of all flowers, why the snowbell? Does he have some lady love I'm unaware of? I can't speak to that, but I'll tell you one thing, Hewitt. We've all got moments locked away and placed close to our hearts. You, me, even a stubborn-headed mule like Benedict. Like the Snowbell, we want him frozen like that forever. And like the Snowbell, they're liable to shatter if we let another handle him carelessly. I understand. I apologize if I was too forward. Let us for- No, it isn't you that needs to apologize. I'm always telling Benedict no one likes being lectured. It was enlightening. I see you and Benedict are true friends. For lack of a better word, I. Bring me a draft of ale, and I'll tell you all about our younger days. At least, what I can remember. I recall Benedict wasn't nearly as capable as he is now. Hmm. I may have to take you up on that offer. Do you really reckon snowbells are still blooming somewhere out there? Perhaps. Though I've not seen them in this region, they may still bloom in the southern reaches. In other words, a trek and a half from here. Don't give up the search, my friend. A whole day of hunting, and this is all I have to show for it. Wanted to give Lord Saranoa something meaty for once. A deer is no easy prey. You are a skilled hunter. One deer to your three boar? <laughs> it's plain who the better of us is. I don't reckon you let a single one escape. Could be hunting is your true calling. Perhaps. Before I was knighted, I was keeper of the hawk's roost. And besides, I come from a long line of hunters. That's so. And what drove you to fight men for a living? Lenbrook put out a call for Hawk Riders, that they might challenge S. Frost's aerial superiority. I answered that call. 
My training was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. But I won a position in the Kingsguard, where I petitioned to serve Prince Roland personally. Seeing you in action, I'm sure you could have made a fine commander. Yet you stuck by the Prince's side. Yes, I did. Flugi is yet to return. I hope he isn't in danger. What's this then? A traveler out here all alone, huh? And in sore need of protection by my reckoning. Hand over your coin purse and maybe we can reach an arrangement. Bandits? Here? How could I be so careless? I'd advise against running. Ain't nowhere for you to go. Enough! Ugh. Are you hurt? I'm fine, thanks to you. Had you not showed up when you did, I could have ended up dead. You have my gratitude. Is that your hawk? It guided me here. I was in the middle of a hunt, but your bird cried out as if calling to me. Thank heavens I did not lose that arrow. I've never known hawks could be so wise. His name is Flugi, and he's more than my hawk. He's my closest companion. The bandits are growing more bold by the day. It is best you returned home. Wait! I have scarce little to give in the way of coin, but still, there must be something I can do to repay you. Think nothing of it. It is the royal family's duty to protect our subjects. The royal... good heavens! You're Prince Roland! Forgive me, your highness. There's no need for all that stuffy formality. May we meet again soon. Yes, your highness. That was my first meeting with the prince. He saved my life, and for that, I shall be forever in his debt. I could settle for no less than the king's guard. Greetings. Were you training outside? Not today. Even I stay away from the proving grounds on occasion. The members of the King's Guard must keep themselves in prime fighting shape. That includes resting when our bodies are weary. Mmm, a wise policy. The handmaidens of Esfras adhere to a similar principle. With clear eyes, we see, we serve, we anticipate. Interesting. Although our tools are different, we're alike in our aims. Indeed. We must be the pillars our charges turn to in times of need. Even so, we are only human. If I may ask in confidence, do you ever find it... trying to serve Prince Roland? Is he ever unreasonable? Have you ever found your patience tested? No, never. It is an honor to serve, always. It is an odd question to ask, but I must confess I find it hard to imagine what it is like to serve in a society such as Esfrost's. As do I, although I lived through it. It all feels as if it were so long ago. You're not one for speaking plain, are you? But I suspect we may have much in common. I am curious to hear your story, if you are willing to share it. Of course. I made a promise to myself long ago to effect change through my own deeds, not to live as a mere servant. And what came of that promise? 
Hailing from Hyzant, at first I endeavored to learn at the Ministry that I might use the knowledge gained there to help others. But they guard their secrets fiercely and maintain strict control over what fields their students can pursue. As much as it pained me to leave my home, I could not suffer such stifling rules, and so set forth to Esrost. I took quickly to learning at the archives, where independent study is encouraged. I spent days in the stacks, soaking up as much knowledge as I could, when one day, You are the one called Gila, yes? Yes, my lord. They tell me you're the most talented researcher the Archives have ever seen. I couldn't say that, my lord. Though I do spend more time here than most anyone else. Admirable modesty. And you aren't frightened of me. Most impressive. I believe we have a suitable role for you. Come with me. The Archduke would have a word. The Archduke? But... No harm will come to you, if that is your fear. Now, follow me. Lord Zvarog had arranged an audience with the former Archduke of Esfrost, who appointed me as Frederica's personal tutor. She was the former Archduke's daughter, so I took my duty seriously. Yet I could never shake the feeling that I had betrayed my ideals. Perhaps I justified it by telling myself that my teachings could plant the seed for change. An indirect approach, but an active one nonetheless. The chance was unexpected to be sure, but I could not very well deny it. The Archduke's successor, Gustadov, was a man that paid no heed to birth or blood. He affected a change in people's attitudes, a change which provided fertile ground in which my teachings could take root. Thus, I stayed by Frederica's side. Truth be told, I had not thought to be with her for this long. And yet, here I am. Life is truly a journey of unforeseen destinations. Please, good sir, toss us a spare coin. A beggar. Cast off from the Esfrosty Mine, no doubt. Focus, Rudolph. There is work to be done. Many thanks, sir. May your good deed be returned tenfold. Apologies for that, ma'am. On we go. This war has forced so many into poverty. Everyone looks a bit more downtrodden these days. Hmm. Is everything all right? You seem miles away. Just thinking of the past is all. your last run, smuggler scum. Damn it all. Looks like I'm done for. You're under arrest for the illegal transportation and distribution of salt. Please. You've got to let me go. I beg you. My little brother needs me. He'll die if you don't. He's sick and... <laughs> A likely story. What a pity, then, that you chose to betray your country rather than support him through honest means. Throw him in a cell so he can contemplate the consequences of his crimes. No, get your hands off me. You gotta let me go. I got to smuggle in salt so I could afford medicine for my brother. We could barely put food on the table, let alone find money for medicine. I know it ain't right, but what choice did I have? He died while I was locked up. I broke my promise to him. 
I had no idea. It's not anything to do with ye, anyhow. Let's get back to work. Ah, that's the good stuff. Ain't no one can pour a pint like you. I take coin for drink, not compliments. It's hard enough to keep this place running on my own as it is. Need me to lend a hand? Thought you'd never ask. You can start by washing the dishes, then restocking our foodstuffs, fixing up that wobbly table, and... I leave it to me. Ha, <laughs> I'm only playing. I'd never put a paying customer to labor. But that's an awful lot of work for any one person. Ever give thought to finding someone with whom you might share the burden? You can stop right there. The last thing I need is anyone else complicating my life. Sounds like you're speaking from experience. I had myself a someone once, you know? Special-like. Till he left me for a specialer someone. Raised my son Theo all by myself after that. He'd be a man grown now, if the war hadn't taken him. Uh, forgive me, Hasabara. Didn't mean to go drudging up painful memories. No need for apologies. I don't know anyone who doesn't have a thing or two in their past that haunts them. In truth, I'm more exhausted than anything. Must be the years taking their toll. Ain't got nothing to do with age, and everything to do with the hardships you've overcome. <laughs> More impressive than an old soldier drowning his sorrows in mead. <laughs> what kind of barkeep am I, letting my poor patron wallow? Well, sometimes wallowing's good for the soul. Come on, have a round with me. My treat. Took you long enough to make the offer. Now, what shall we toast to? Hmm... How about tears? I to Theo. Please, you can't take our wheat. We just sent food the other day. Silence. Lord Walford has ordered the requisition of all provisions. You wouldn't dare disobey your lord, would you? Of course not. I... I just can't believe Lord Walfort would command such a thing. Are you accusing me, a noble woman of Glenbrook, of lying? <laughs> How dare you, peasant. Mayhap we should see what the commotion is about. Mind telling us what's going on? Well, if it isn't Captain Eridor, thank you for all that you do to keep these lands safe. You're one of the lot what recently fled from the Crown City, ain't you? Just so, yes. I came to humbly lend what aid I could to Lord Wolford and deliver on the provisions I promised. What is your quarrel with these people? If you could explain the situation, we'd be more than happy to lend what aid we can. Please, I beg of you, don't take our food. It's all we have. I've always known Lord Walfort to care for his people above all. Why would he do this to us? What madness is this? Lord Saranoa has strictly forbidden commandeering food from the common folk. Surely you aren't asking these good people to relinquish their stores to you in his name. I am simply gathering provisions on Lord Walfort's behalf, as I promised. Honestly, he should be grateful. Grateful? <laughs> He'd be red in the face if he saw what you were doing. Ain't no way he ordered it. On the contrary, you are acting in violation of your Lord's decree. We cannot overlook your actions. You will come with us and be jailed. There, you will await judgment for your crimes. What? No! 
nonsense is this? I am a noblewoman of Glenbrook. How dare you try to order me about, you self-important little man? You've no authority over me! Look, I ain't disagreeing, but are you sure we should accost her without seeking Lord Saranoa's counsel first? We haven't that luxury. The longer she is allowed to roam free, the more the people will suffer, and our Lord's good name be sullied. We must show the people that unethical acts will not go unpunished. Take her away. You will pay for your impudence! Can't believe there are scoundrels out here using House Wolfort's name for ill gain. You've done us all proud today, Yulio. Thank you ever so much, my lord. We'd be facing starvation if you hadn't stepped in. She really had us fooled. We should have known Lord Wolford is too kind a man to order anything like that. If you are ever troubled again, please seek me out. I shall ensure that any wrongs committed against you are set right. That tome is an apprentice's resource, if I'm not mistaken. Are you studying ironworking? Yes. I borrowed it some time ago from the archives in the Grand Duchy of Esfrost. I haven't had a chance to return it, what with the state of affairs being as it is. Ians, I can't remember the last time you privileged us with a visit. Well, my weapons aren't going to forge themselves. But now that I've a respite from my days of sweat and flame, I thought I'd continue my studies. You hunger for knowledge the way a fire hungers for kindling. I'd never have become the blacksmith I am if not for what I gleaned from these tomes. If it takes a lifetime of studying and striving to forge the perfect weapon, then so be it. One day, all will know the name of Ian's, the greatest smithy the realm has That is all well and good, but would you mind proclaiming that a little more quiet? Ah, uh, yes, uh, apologies. In my excitement, I quite forgot I was in a library. I must say, I can't help but admire your burning ambition. But while we're speaking in hushed tones, our army has been anything but quiet as of late. You forge weapons for them, yes? Might you have any insight into the matter? I wish I did, but I have scant time for the goings-on outside my own small forge. Though, now that you mention it, my orders from the army have increased. Could it be that they're preparing for war? <laughs> As if a war could break out on the eve of our three nations' grand new venture. Indeed. That would be... unthinkable. S. Frost's sudden attack on Glenbrook confirmed my worst fears. And once the war started, I could forget about returning this book. But I still hope to. One day, when peace has returned to our realm. I hope you will fight by my side till it does. Without hesitation, my lord. So it appears the duchy intends to capture Glenbrook. But Prince Roland slipped from their grasp and fled to Wolfort. The ink on the treaty is barely dried, and they're already declaring war. And what's more, there's a price on Prince Roland's head. It has spurred the masses into movement. They will bear their fangs at us in time. We cannot leave them to their own devices. I see this as a wonderful opportunity. 
We can make it clear how we stand after the Salt Iron War. Aye. And I much prefer to extinguish embers than a raging inferno. It sounds like you intend to start a war. Calm yourselves. There is no need to get so worked up over this. It is true that this grave matter may one day affect Hyzant. But it is in times like these that we must trust the Hierophant's words more than ever. <laughs>